Hi, I'm Roberta Tucci. I'm originally from New York, but now I live in Wilmington, Delaware. This is my studio here in Wilmington. I make art to help me understand things about the world around me. My art connects me to the world, to ideas, and to people. When I was young, I spent a lot of time looking at the sky. I would explore the areas along the edge of numerous quiet suburban places where I lived with my family, the fields, the creeks, the woods, and I would lie down in the grass and look at the sky. I remember the sky as being limitless to me. This was a large painting I did many years later of blossoms from a winter hazel bush blowing in the sky. As a young person, being in these landscapes was broader to me than just looking at them. I was totally absorbed by them, saturated by the smells, by the sounds, by the movement of the creatures around me. In this painting, Bee Line, I mapped the flight of a bee moving around flowers at the height of summer heat. I come from an Italian-American family from New York City, but we moved around a lot. It seemed like we were always making friends in new places or leaving them behind, so my brothers and sister were important to me. Wherever we lived, we would drive back and forth to the city to visit our relatives back in New York. My dad would mark the route on a road map with a marker or a pen. It was important for us to set off before dawn to avoid rush hour traffic around any major city. These long road trips were exciting for me. Since I was the smallest member of the family, I rode in the back of the station wagon, lying down on a mat next to the suitcases. I viewed the passing landscape from a prone position, sometimes sleeping, sometimes watching the sun as it journeyed across the sky. This painting is called Urchin Sunrise. I'm still fascinated by the way the sun journeys across the sky, marking the passing of time. As our road trips brought us closer to New York, my view from the back of the station wagon grew more industrial. I could feel the energy of this landscape grow more intense and by the time we got to Newark, New Jersey, sleep was never possible. In spite of living in quieter environments, these busy urban landscapes were magical to me, as if I could feel the connections between all the people living there. Network number two is part of a series of works that map connections between people. Each dot represents a person, and the lines that connect the dots represent the relationship between those people. The work is part of a series based on network diagrams. Network diagrams are typically used in computer telecommunication to visually represent the interconnectedness of groups or systems. After I graduated from high school, I moved to New York City where I studied at the School of Visual Arts. The 1980s was an exciting time to be a young artist in New York. I was fortunate to connect with a lot of great artists and vibrant thinkers at SVA. Mostly though, I had amazing role models there. They helped me expand my expectations for myself and for my artwork. Ultimately, I built my career on the skills that I learned there. This is an installation shot of an exhibit at the Visual Arts Gallery on Wooster Street from 1983. I worked mostly in sculpture back then. Those were also my works in oil stick on tar paper on the wall behind my sculpture. I was really interested in making installation pieces that represented landscapes from my memory. I stayed in New York throughout the 80s and into the 90s, eventually moving out of New York and out of sculpture too. After many years as a working artist, I continue to make artwork about subjects that fascinate me or about ideas that intrigue me. For example, I am fascinated by the flight of hummingbirds. Their motion seems so random, so unplanned. It is not easy to study a hummingbird for a long time. They move so quickly. This is an abstraction based on the movement of hummingbirds. 
I find celestial maps to be very beautiful, but also puzzling. I've never understood the connection between a cluster of stars and the classical figure that a constellation is named after, like my zodiac sign, Aquarius. I've learned that celestial maps come from a tradition started around 150 AD by an Egyptian astronomer and mathematician, Claudius Ptolemy. Ptolemy wrote a book called Almagest in which he named 48 constellations for classical figures. I decided to create my own celestial map. This celestial map is made up of five different constellations on individual panels that connect in groups of two, three, or five. This version is called five-part constellation. I've never really been able to understand how the sunrise and sunset change at various rates in different seasons of the year. I think that it has something to do with the rotation and revolution of the Earth and something about the tilt of the planet. But I like to think about it, and just when I think I've got it, the seasons change, and so I move on. All that thinking about the Earth's rotation and revolution led me to this painting. I often work in a series with repeating images, slightly changing them as if to explain what an image looks like at different moments in time. This is Rotating Axis Triptych. Recently, I have been thinking more and more about weather, severe weather, stormy weather, climate change. These three works in progress are about heavy weather. I'm thinking of calling them chance of storms likely. I hope that you have enjoyed this presentation and thanks for taking the time to check out my studio work.